Oh. <laughs> he freaking he freaking raised the thing. <laughs> holy, holy <laughs> God. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Pretty excited, pretty excited about being here. This is a place I've always wanted to fish. You know, you hear good, nothing but good stories about Sam Rayburn and fishing. And I mean, just look at this place. Look how gorgeous it is. Down here doing, visiting some family. Can't tell my mom I'm in Texas yet. She'll be upset if I didn't come visit her first. I'm lying, she knows. She knows, stop jibber jabbering, let's get on some fish. Another thing we need to talk about that's a good controversial subject is gas money. See, I'm of the mind if I'm fishing in a BFL and I can't get my guy fish, well, you don't owe me shit. Like, I don't care. I mean, that's just my personal preference. Everybody has their personal preference. But doesn't mean I'm not going to, you know, if I'm the co-angler, I'm still going to attempt to pay that guy even if I don't catch anything. And, you know, I'm still going to... Even if he's like, oh man, no, don't worry about it. I'm still gonna put money in his cup holder uh, when I get his truck. Have you ever given a guy extra money because you won money? Uh, hmm. Mm, no, I think I just try to generally do about 60. Who are they saying? They were saying somebody during a recent tournament was, yeah, was skipping a buzz bait. <laughs> Woo, right there. First one on the old uh, top chop buzz bait that I've gotten. There you go. Top chop buzz bait, Vantage Bait Company. <laughs> I, that was, uh, well, you probably put two in that area, and then I put two in the same area. Interesting. Yeah. It just goes to show you if you move too fast sometimes, you know, which the way you're talking about with them kind of slapping at it, you know, being uncommittal fish, start to try to put those patterns together and everything. That would be one of the things I would cue in on is like, okay, maybe I need to slow down just a little bit and really methodically work it because we've at least established they're definitely what hanging on the knees a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. Um, that's one thing I love about fishing with other people. That's why I was being a co-angler for so long is because you get to experience that with other people and get to pick up on those little bits of knowledge uh, or maybe even lots of knowledge at different times. Been waiting to get on some good buzzbait fish. Of course, I'm throwing that on the absolute perfect setup, which is fluorocarbon. What rod and reel are you using? <laughs> the, uh, the mock speed stick. I actually well, like this. my rod. Yeah. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Got the old hopper mag on it though. You're gonna have to get some of these. <laughs> I just pinballed that bus bait. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I've had a buddy come right behind me, just whack right into a dock. Next pitch, whack right into a dock. Third pitch, three pounder. <laughs> After I already ran, ran a spinner bait across his head, I went out once this year, shot a 91. And that's that's with some foot wedging in there. That's not a true true but it was it was taking taking your licks counting your strokes losing balls all that kind of thing and i was surprised I was, I was still sticking sticking greens with my wedges those never left me i love i mean that's what i love out of uh <laughs> surprised i even felt it Woohoo! New tech jigs. Not somebody I'm sponsored by, not somebody I care to be sponsored by because I'm just gonna keep buying them and using them. I use jigs, especially these jigs. I, I go in pff, heaviest cover I can find. This this is kind of a gimmicky jig, but it, it does what it says it's supposed to do. It's a new tech. And oh I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> Jig. Old Carolina rig. But, I mean, again, you look at it and you think, okay, this is kind of a, a gimmicky jig. It doesn't have the normal thing. But this really does write itself inside of the mouth. And they've got some really cool videos that they show online of this jig. 
how it's kind of going through a chain link fence and not getting hung up. And I can guarantee you like 95% or more of my hookups always end in the roof of the mouth. And it's not punching a huge hole like a, uh, say like a hack attack would, would do. That's why I, I pay for these and you know, we even put our own rubber skirts on them too. That Super Duty three rod, I'm throwing uh, an extra wide spool reel because I'm throwing 20 pound cigar in Vizex and I want to get a lot of line on that reel. Uh, I throw almost always a one ounce egg sinker unless I'm in the grass, at which point I'll throw a one ounce uh, bullet weight sinker. I'm a two bead guy, and this comes from those of you who fished Texas for years and years. Charlie Reagan used to throw three beads. I think that, that glass against glass is just a little bit of a unique sound, and I'll take anything to be unique and or to make a fish be curious and come look at it. But one of the things I do that I just shared with Lou, I use a really big swivel. And I on my Carolina rig, now if I'm if I'm throwing like a, a a fluke where I've got a swivel out in front of it, I'll use a smaller one. But the reason I like having that great big swivel is the ring's bigger. And I think it just puts less pressure on those two knots that are tied to that split to that uh, swivel because it's a it's a bigger piece of metal, quite frankly, you're 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 uh, tying it to. And what I have noticed also is I don't believe, you know how sometimes when you're fishing a rig and you'll start seeing those little chips in your ring? I believe on these bigger, heavier duty swivels, and I don't buy the cheap ones, I buy the good ones. I think those are more durable because the last thing you want are little metal chips rubbing against your line. You're going to break that line more off. So uh, that's my setup and, and the hook I just basically use according to the size. Right now I'm throwing a centipede, old style centipede. Yeah. Uh, so I use a little B3 aught hook. Uh, but that's my current Carolina rig setup. Uh, I will say uh, today I'm throwing fluorocarbon leader. Uh, there are days, especially when I want that bait up off the bottom a little bit or to sink slower, I'll throw mono. But in general, I'm throwing fluorocarbon just because, again, of the sensitivity I want to feel those bites, especially fishing around this wood. As soon as something bites it, I want to know about it so I can get a good pull on it. So that's my current Carolina rig setup. And I told you then that. Oh man, freaking annihilated that toad. Get up out of there. What, what, what did I say about having the right rod? <laughs> oh, he spit it. I knew it. I knew it when he did it too. Were you on? Huh? Were you recording? Yeah. <laughs> that was a good fish. He come around the pad or he come through a hole? He came through that pad and I just kept lifting him up. That's all right. That was good enough for me. <laughs> that was really good enough for me. I think we got it on the other camera. I was like, and it shouldn't. Oh, dude. Hooked up? I am hooked up. Whether or not I'll be able to get him out of there, though. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, man. Is he? No, he's not. I'm too close. He got off. Ah, I knew it. I knew it. I was changing. You see how I changed that up? I knew it. Fish. Teamwork. Fish. That's my fish, man. I don't know, y'all couldn't see that, but I looked back here and Luke gave me this. <laughs> I did Luke I did the old pointer. Dog. I did the old bird dog. <laughs> kind of want to get in front of the camera and do that now. The old <laughs> he bird dog had one leg up, his tail was sticking straight up there. Than that. Right there, boss. Right there, boss. <laughs> that was fun, man. I I varied my uh, my retrieve up really fast. I was, instead of going slow, I actually went fast because I was sitting there. Yeah, I was like I was like, wait a second, I'm giving them too long to think about it. Oh, I'll catch them twice, but I I was like, you know what? I'm giving them too long to really think about it and or get spooked by it because we we're sitting here talking about. 
you know, I'd ask Ken, I was like, did, did it hit on the fall? And he's like, like, well, it, it hit pretty, you know, quick is what it seemed like. It hit pretty quick. And then I had, we've had blow ups. We've had misses. I've, as soon as I threw this in while ago, it got hit immediately. So I know the fish are positioned up in the pads. So they're up high. So determine where they're at. And I was like, wait a second. If I don't give them as much time to react with the frog, if I just reel it faster, that'll probably generate a strike. And I mean, first cast and once it clicked in my head to do it, bam, right there. Well, bird fish. dog me another one, honey. <laughs> Let's see what we get on here. I'm sure that algorithm heard it. I knew that bite flipped over. Whoa, skinny. Holy crap. Well, thank you. Look at Oh, you're talking about him. Look at that thing. Wow. That's that's what keto diet gets you, kids. Yeah, that's right. That bass is on keto. Bass on keto. Not a keto, keto. Oh, that's a good Get up. Get up. Do you need it up at all? Give me a grab there, Dad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! He just oh. even said that, too. <laughs> One must too much room to. <sighs> Welcome, Sam Raven, boys and girls, frog fishing. Oh, yeah. That's a dandy. We think that in ways. Six? Yeah. Let's check. That was nice. Gorgeous. Kept that fish on that long? That, yeah, I mean, it, it had a hole in its mouth where that uh, Been pulling on him? That frog was at. I mean, it, there was nothing nothing to getting it out in the net. Or in no net, but. Come on, dude. I'm going to the back. I'm going to the back. You're in the timeout zone. He pulled that thing down. I don't, I don't even know how I didn't get that fish. Oh. <laughs> he freaking, he freaking raised the thing. <laughs> holy, holy God. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. He zeroed in on that frog and would not let it go. I've never seen so many strikes on a frog. Did, did, I think he did. <laughs> My stuff's all jacked up. No. Dang it. So an interesting thing there, I'm wondering. That's the closest we fish had. I just switched to a threes. Uh, he's probably still on there. If you can get me to him. Oh, oh of course. Oh, of course. Jeez. Jeez, Louise. Got plenty of them. Hoglish. Green pumpkin blue. Oh, how. Oh, that was almost my second pitch or my first pitch when I switched over to 3 8 after what we were just talking about. Guys, I want to show you this weight I've been using this year quite a bit. This is the Jinko Creature weight. As you can see, it's got eyes on it. Uh, pretty cool lead. You can find these on Tackle Warehouse. I'll drop a link down in the description below uh, so you can find them, but pretty cool way to kind of spice up your Texas rig, as you can see right there. I mean, that eye is gonna do some kind of reflecting and you know that's something, again, that you can do to maybe spruce up the old Texas rig, give it, give it a little bit different of a look. They come in colors of green. So green, black, maybe purple. I don't know, but that's Jinko. And, you know, I looked for these forever on Tackle Warehouse and they finally got them. Or you can go to their website and buy them. But, you know, I'll drop the Tackle link, Tackle Warehouse links down below. All right, guys. Had a uh, really great day out here today. Finally, we got on a good bite. I always hate when I say finally. <laughs> it sounds like you had like a bad day or something. You we know? struggled for a like, long time. Uh, I mean, it, yeah, not, nothing in fishing is ever easy but great time thank you so Absolutely. much Absolutely, enjoyed it for, for the invite and uh for see coming the world down. headquarters exactly saw the world headquarters one time first time out, ever out on uh sam rayburn good fishing man you've got basically everything out here that you can do yeah you know if you uh if you haven't done so check out ken's channel uh it's it's a lot of high level stuff and that's what i like about it and that's why i follow him on his channel is because it's 
you know, it's everything from talking about managing fisheries to uh, topics that affect us uh, in competition. It's also competition videos, you know, someone going out winning BFLs, uh, not just participating in them, but, but winning them. Um, in, in down here in Texas and you know this is stiff competition down here. If you're interested in that type of material that's not just somebody fishing a sewer drain or something like that <laughs> you know check check out Ken's channel. I, I, you even have done some like high uh, some Laurent some yep, yep. Uh, so fish I've, finder I've got videos. Some FLW pros out to help me learn more about my electronics and mm -hmm. interviewed a number of guys so yeah we've had a great time. Okay. Well, again, thank you so much for this. Absolutely. Guys, as always, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Y'all have a good one. Hey, I'm going to try to talk him into fishing tomorrow. He says he's leaving. We'll see if I, <laughs> I got to see my mama. <laughs> I miss my mama. Mama, you heard that. He's coming to see you versus going out and catching four-pounders. Yes. That's love right there. It is. <laughs>